Uh, before I get started about the game, I want to um, apologize for uh, Jalen, uh, the way he acted after the game. It's very uncharacteristic of Jalen. If you know him, he's a great kid, but um, it's one of the best fan bases in the country. Um, top five, and, and, and Jalen feels terrible about it. I feel terrible about it. I tried to stop it when I saw it, um, but it's not who he is. And uh, I want to apologize to Archie, the team, Indiana Nation, or however you guys call yourself, Hoosier Nation. Um, we're, we're sorry for the way we acted. So, with that said, uh, my kids were phenomenal today. Indiana was really good, I thought. You know, we made shots early, they made shots. We made a bunch of them. We made nine in the first half. Um, you know, we were hard to guard in the first half, and then they made a run. Uh, we couldn't guard them. They made a lot of, up to about the first 32 minutes, they made a lot of shots. Their post up game was terrific. We had no answer, we couldn't zone them, we couldn't man, we couldn't do anything. Um, and then, you know, the second half, we're, we're normally a pretty good free throw shooting team. We missed a bunch of free throws, we missed, Eric missed two layups, uh, we missed some wide open threes, and you know, like, are we going to get over the hump? And the last time out, I was just like, guys, man, we got to, we just got to keep fighting. Daryl made the free throw cut to four, and then we had a dumb foul, uh, and we didn't score, and the guys just stayed resilient, and we got... Three stops in a row at the end. We got the steal in the press. Wiggs made an impossible shot. And then our, you know, we got another stop, and Anthony made a great play to Sticks. We got a layup, which is what you want in those situations. And then, you know, they missed a two-footer. So in the end, it was our day. Um, but I thought our defense was really good that last 11 seconds, too. Hand up for questions, please. If you've been hurt in a truck crash, call the Jackledge Law Group. We have decades of experience handling truck crashes. We recognize issues unique to trucks, including black box findings and DOT regulations. We find insurance others don't know exists. Some think the only coverage is with the truck, yet we've found millions more insurance with the broker. It's important to collect information, find representation immediately. Truck cases are complex. If you've been hurt in a truck crash, call 855-BIG-DOG-1 right now. Mark, in, in terms of uh, Jalen, um, what what did you see at the end of the game? And, and, and you know, just taunting. I don't like it. And our team was, and then you know, um, just not. It wasn't Jalen. You know, so if you know Jalen, you know you know Jalen. You've watched him grow up. He's just a great kid. So he got caught up. He got caught up. He's 20 years old. He got caught up. He's playing his tail off. I mean, he's just been he's been phenomenal offensively, defensively, decision making. So he just got caught up in it. And, you know, this arena is just terrific and it kind of gets you fired up to play in it. And um, I just think the guys were so happy how they handled such a tough environment and just kept fighting all the way till the end. So, With everything Jalen did before that point, how, how do you see him grow? And, and do you think this game is kind of the result of almost getting that confidence from this last game <clears throat> for him is it just building on itself. Yeah, he, he, you know, he's walking around with a little bit more of a swagger in between games and all that stuff. So he's he's feeling good about himself. Um, and Indiana can really guard. And their ball screen defense in the second half was terrific. And we didn't get a lot of open looks uh, in it. Um, but he just, he's just more confident. And Aaron Wiggins wouldn't have made that shot two weeks ago. He's more confident. Eric Alla was much better tonight. Even though he missed a couple layups and free throws, he just a different swagger to him. And then Anthony was unguardable. I mean, he got the ball wherever he wanted. He got downhill. He got us into the bonus by himself. Um, so we have a lot of guys playing with more confidence, but Sticks is really taking it to another level. Mark, did, did the um, threes kind of surprise you from both clubs leading yeah. off the game? Not from us, because we can really shoot. It's been the most crazy year I've ever had. Uh, I don't even like looking at our stats. They're so bad. And we're 6-3 and three in the league. We're shooting 37% in the league. Um, but we make sh our guys can shoot. Anthony can make shots. Wiggs can make shots. Dante can make shots. Jalen can really shoot. we got a lot of guys that can really shoot it. And then maybe you say Daryl's when the shot clock went down. You know, maybe that one surprised me a little bit. But Daryl's made some threes, too. So, um, you know, I made a comment the other day. I made it on the radio. Hey, we might be the best three point shooting con team in the country the rest of the way. Who knows? Um, we made 12. I don't know how many we made today because I can't see. Um, but we made a lot. Um, 12. So we made 24 in our last two road games. That's a lot. And um, so maybe we become that team. They have good shooters too, right? And um, 
they had the right guys taking them, and they got some open looks and, and knocked them down. Tom. Mark, uh, I think it was 12 straight possessions to start the half. They scored. Um, yeah. And what was the difference at the end of the game and, and what and, and on the last play, the defense that uh, um, I, I, I guess it was Jalen played on Trace Jackson? Yeah, well, the, the difference is, is they were shooting layups. I mean, just wide open layups, whether it was an offensive rebound or deep post touches or throwing over the top or transition defense wasn't good enough. And um, they're really hard to guard, and especially when they can throw it in and throw it out and they're making threes. They're almost impossible to guard, okay? For a team that can't shoot, Archie does a great job of zone offense. And they get, I mean, I watched Northwestern try to zone them here, and they, got, they scored against the zone in the first half. But I was desperate. And I wanted to keep sticks out of foul trouble, so we went a little zone. But um, the difference in the end was time and score. You know, it's just there's there's a lot on these kids today. You know, and um, you know it's just time and score. We got lucky. We got a deflection, and we hit the shot. Um, and you know, sticks blocked a couple shots on Trace, um, and he might have been. You know, who knows? But he got a good look. He, I mean, he was too. I mean, I'm sitting there thinking they've made every shot. I'm like, damn, here we go again, right? And it was our day. Second. And Mark, excuse me for changing the subject a little bit, but are your players aware of what yes. happened today? Yeah. Uh, have you addressed it? With yeah, them? we talked to the team. We wanted them to hear it from us. So I, I was told it was official. So we told them, and um, yeah, it's. Sad day, unfortunately. Have you crossed paths with him? Uh, and, uh, I was an assistant with the 76ers for one year, so he was born in that town and came back, and that was really the only time I was around Kobe. One of the all-time best. On a completely different subject, you guys did something rare today. You won on the road, something that doesn't happen a lot in the Big Ten. Yeah. Do you have a theory as to why home court advantage has been so pronounced yeah. this year more than any other year in history? Yeah, my theory is there's – Really, really good teams that are really well coached and great venues. And so sometimes a league will have five or six bad teams. You can go on the road and play bad and still win. That's not happening this year. And so whoever stays positive and tries to show up on game day and do the best they can, sneak one out like that every now and then, um, helps you. Now, we, gave, you know, we lost one like exact opposite. We were up one at Wisconsin, and they beat us. And so, you know, we're really close to having three straight road wins, but um, we didn't get it done. So uh, it's just a great league, and the fan bases are terrific, and the coaching is terrific. And the defense, the defense in our league is at a high, high level, and that has a lot to do with it. Coach, uh, you're down seven, 2.30 to go. Yeah. All momentum's going Indiana as well. Yeah. What did you tell your team, and what was the game plan? Did well, I was frustrated, so Wicks fouled him. And two, I think it was 2.37 to go. And I said, guys, we haven't caught a break this half. We've missed layups, wide open shots. We've missed free throws. They've been terrific. I said, maybe the last 2.37, everything goes right, right? And we were able to, you know, get, get Sticks was able to get to the, you know, get to the basket. Uh, we got the steal. Wiggs made a tough shot. We got stops. I mean, just it couldn't have gone any better for us the last 2.37. So... We just kept talking about keep fighting, keep fighting. We're right here, we're right here. Put pressure on them. Make them make, make, them make a jump shot. And, um, you know, they just kept shooting layup after layup after layup. We've got to make them shoot jump shots over a hand. And I, th I thought we did a good job of that. And then every time out, they're the best rebounding team. I haven't played Michigan State yet, so I don't know. Um, they're always one of the best. But this, this is a heck of an Indiana team. And they, they're physical. And you just every time you're begging our guys to box out, and rebound. We're not a great rebounding team yet. You know, it's, an, it's another step for this team to take. Hopefully we'll come, but everything went our way the last 237. Two more, one for Don and one for Emily, please. How big was Darrell down the stretch in terms of making a couple of tough baskets? And yeah. Well, he wasn't very good, and I sat him next to me quite a bit over there, and I think he just was really pissed. And, uh, and that's our best lineup. You know it. I went with it about the seven-minute mark, and um, I just kept saying, can Daryl guard? And then they went small with us, which helped. Smith's not small, but um, I thought Daryl could guard him. He was guarding him at the three. So Daryl was really good. I, I don't know if he got the deflection or not. I think he did in the press. I think it was Daryl that got the deflection. 
Um, but he was he was pissed at me. He was pissed at himself, and he just he was terrific the last seven minutes. Last one. Uh, when when things were looking really good offensively in the first half, how would you see from Eric and how he was kind of running the team and, and seeing things? Well, like the way we're running, everybody's involved. Um, Eric had six assists at halftime. I'm not sure what he ended up with, um, but. We were good last year playing five freshmen because Eric Ayala was really good. Eric hasn't been Eric Ayala until the last couple games, so uh, he was terrific. He's got great pace. He's got great confidence. Um, we were able to get downhill a lot. We're hard to guard. You know, we're hard to guard, and it just it's it just it's kind of happening, and, and and we're getting there uh, as we go. But I thought Eric Eric was really good defensively. They kept going at Eric. Okay, so they ran baseline runner, whoever Eric was guarding, and Eric was terrific defense. But that's his best defensive game he's played in a while. Mark, thank you, Coach. That's it, folks. Thank you. All right, guys. Thank you. Thank you.